Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Lifeway. It's great to have you here for the third part of our series, The Truth. I'm Pastor Mark Schultz, one of the pastors here at Lifeway, and we're so glad to have you with us. Those of you who have joined us in the building here today, and those of you who are joining us online as well. And if you are joining us for the first time, whether in the building or online, and would like to go that next step and maybe walk a little bit deeper uh, in your life with Jesus, then we would love to connect with you and walk with you. And we invite you to either fill in the online connect form at lifeway.net.au or it's also in the chat on the side of the live stream right at the moment. What is truth? That's the question that Pilate asked over 2,000 years ago. And yet it's a question that people are still asking, still searching for the answers for. Elvis Presley once noted, truth is like the sun. You can shut it out for a time, but it ain't going away. And we remember that today, that the one who came to us from the Father, full of grace and truth, is the one who comes to sacrifice himself for us. This one was shut out for a while too. And yet on this day, clothed in humility, immersed in depravity, encased in tragedy, accused of blasphemy, beaten for our iniquity, tortured with brutality, suffering in agony and sacrifice for humanity, the truth is proclaimed to the world for all eternity. God loves you to death so that you will have life in his name. It's the truth that we experience again on this day. The one who fashioned the universe hangs dead at the hands of his rebellious creation. Human agony is felt in full in the heavens and the sun suffers as the only solution to and the only freedom from that which would destroy us forever. Jesus is the sacrifice given in love for you and for all creation. Jesus says, shall I not drink from the cup of suffering that the Father has given me? The truth, you can shut it out for a while, but it ain't going away. Let's stand. He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of the dry ground. He was despised and rejected by others. He was a man of suffering, acquainted with infirmity. He was a man of sorrows, familiar with suffering. He was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and God has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Come, let us worship him. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ Jesus, have mercy upon us. Lord Jesus, have mercy upon us. We remember today the ultimate sacrifice you made for us. You were despised and rejected, oppressed and afflicted, and yet through your sacrifice you have conquered tears by your crying, pain by your suffering, and death by your dying. We come overwhelmed by the depth of your love and mercy for us and your commitment to defeat sin and evil even when it meant your own suffering and death. As we kneel before the foot of your cross today, help us to see and to know your love for us. Help us acknowledge the endless love of what you have done for us. 
Inspire us by the truth of your sacrificial death for us that we may faithfully follow your way of life, living in your love, sharing your hope and growing more fully in the grace that makes all things new. Amen. shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. 
The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I have received from my father. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side there was a garden, and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the garden, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They carried torches, lanterns and weapons. Jesus, knowing what was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said, and Judas the traitor was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. 
This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, Put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Cephas, the high priest that year. Cephas was the one who had advised the Jewish leaders that it would be good if one man died for the people. I need you here by my side When darkness comes to amplify my pride I took the coin, I kissed your cheek I never knew my flesh could be so weak Never knew my flesh could be so weak. Though I'm broken on this cornerstone, you still love me, claim me as your own. The stone that we rejected has not rejected us, Jesus. You did it all for love. Spirit feel this heart of hate. Break me down so you can recreate. Break me down so you can Did it all for love. The 
西门彼得跟着耶稣，还有一个门徒跟着。那门徒是大祭司所认识的，他就同耶稣进了大祭司的院子。彼得却站在门外。大祭司所认识的那个门徒出来，和看门的侍女说了一声，就领彼得进去。那看门的侍女对彼得说：你不也是这人的门徒么？他说：我不是。仆人和差役因为天冷，就生了炭火，站在那里烤火。彼得也同他们站着烤火。西门彼得正站着烤火，有人对他说：你不也是他的门徒么？彼得不承认，说：我不是。有大祭司的一个仆人，是彼得削掉耳朵那人的亲戚，说。我不是看见你同他在园子里么？彼得又不承认，那时鸡就叫了。Lord Jesus, what have you done? How often does our pride undo us and our lips deny you? We are so quick to sacrifice our integrity and our relationship with you. Who brings it up? Yet you willingly deny yourself and become one of us, and one with us, that we may never be denied by you, Father in heaven. Jesus, we can't comprehend the depth of your love that you would do this for us. 
May we never be ashamed for bearing your name and boldly proclaiming your name with our lips. Amen. 主耶稣，我哋做咗啲乜嘢嘢？而我哋好多时都会因为我哋自己嘅高傲，我哋嘅嘴唇会系拒绝你。我哋好容易就会牺牲，为咗牺牲我哋自己嗰个正直同埋同神你之间嗰个关系。当我哋遇到困难嘅时候。我哋好容易嘅嚟到去拒絕我哋自己，亦都拒絕在天上嘅天父。但係神啊，主耶穌話：我哋真係唔能夠明白到主你對我哋嘅愛係幾咁嘅深。你為我哋犧牲，我哋永遠都唔會因為我哋要奉你嘅命去傳福音嘅時候嚟到去羞愧。我哋願意用你嘅嘴唇嚟到去將福音嚟到去傳開，透過奉主名求。阿门。Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanliness. They did not enter the palace because they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, "What charges are you bringing against this man?" "If he were not a criminal," they replied, "we would not have handed him over to you." Pilate said, "Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law." "But we have no right to execute anyone," they objected. This took place to fulfil what Jesus had said about the kind of death he was going to die. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, "Are you the King of the Jews? Is that your own idea?" Jesus asked, "Or did others talk to you about me?" "Am I a Jew?" Pilate replied. "Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me." What is it you have done? Jesus said, "My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place." You are a king, then," said Pilate. Jesus answered, "You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth." Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? Retorted Pilate. With this, he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, "I find no basis for a charge against him, but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the King of the Jews?" They shouted back, "No, not him. Give us Barabbas." Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. Truth. He wanted to talk about the truth to me. He'd come into the world for the purpose of telling people the truth. He said, "Ha! What is truth?" I said to him. Can't really say I was interested in what he had to say about it anyway. I knew what truth was from my perspective, from my vantage point. Power. Power is truth. That's what I showed him. I, Pontius Pilate, procurator of the Roman province of Judea, servant of my emperor Tiberius, I showed him. I worked hard for power. I played the game well. I did all the necessary bidding. Sure, I had to compromise here and there, but. It was only with the promise of a greater good on the other side. Jesus, 
didn't seem to agree with me. There was something, something so unsettling in the silence that came after my questions. He just stood there, humbly, quietly. And when he spoke, it was with a strength, a quiet strength that was, was really unnerving. And yet, challenging at the same time. He challenged my power. He challenged it more than anyone had ever done so, especially one whose whole life I held in the palm of my hands. He just stood there. And he looked me straight in the eye and he quietly said, you wouldn't have any power or authority over me if it hadn't been given to you from above. Some nerve. You know, I really wasn't surprised when they brought Jesus to me. I'd had an eye on him for a while. You don't rise to power by being indifferent to those who are troublemakers. I'd had my hands full of insurrections and disturbances. And, and let me tell you, the ones who give in to the violence, well, they're really easy to control. Like that fool Barabbas caught him right in the act. But ones who use words... Like Jesus, they're really hard to get a handle on because you don't know what they're going to do. When he was out in the countryside, he couldn't have any influence. He wasn't really a threat. But the moment he stepped into the Jerusalem precinct, the moment he stepped into the temple and started to cause a public disturbance, I was right on him. I was all over it. There was something that was different about this man. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but my soldiers were on edge. They were really, really jittery all the time whenever Jesus was around. They had to be on constant alert because there was something different about this man. You could smell it in the air. There was this aroma. And you just knew that something was going to happen. And we were ready. My soldiers were ready. Ready for the fight that we knew was coming. So, you know, I really wasn't surprised when I got up early one morning and I heard that the religious leaders had arrested him and they wanted to dump him on my doorstep. I was annoyed, but not surprised. On what charge is he being brought to me, I asked them. On the charge of disloyalty to the Roman state, they said. They had a laundry list of crimes. He kept preaching about a new kingdom. He kept talking about his kingship. But I knew and the Jewish leaders knew. They knew what side their bread was buttered on. They knew that we had no king but Caesar. And when I mockingly said to him, so you are a king then? He gave me this rubbish answer that he's come to the world to testify to the truth. Power is truth. And this man, powerful, this man, the king? Nothing, nothing could be further from the truth. What is truth? I find no basis to your accusations against him.
Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they slapped him in the face. Once more Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders insisted, We have a law, and according to that law he must die because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? he asked Jesus. But Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said. Don't you realise I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, You would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free. But the Jewish leaders kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at the place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabbatha. It was a day of preparation of the Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king, Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priest answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. You know, it would have been so much easier if he had just fought back. But he just stood there. Stood there through it all. Stood there as my soldiers had a little bit of fun with him. Gave him a little bit of a whipping. He just stood there as they played dress up with him. And put a crown on his head. It was the only crown he was ever going to get. But it did draw a little bit of royal blood. However, that was nothing compared to the blood his own people were demanding from outside the palace. The truth is, no display of our power ever seemed to intimidate him. Most people would have crumbled in a heap at my feet and begged for mercy, but not Jesus. He never once lost control. He never once cowered. I couldn't believe it. Even though the whole world seemed to be against him, he just stood, stood before me. He never felt like he needed to give an answer to any of us. Who was this man? What sort of man is this? I find no basis of evidence against this man. What is truth? What is truth for you? All I know is that you can try and hide the truth. You can cover up the truth. You're all good at doing that. But let me tell you, the truth will always 
break through in the end. And history will be on my side. This man was innocent. This man was no king. And I was going to have no part in what was about to happen. Enough is enough. This has to stop. This has the potential to get out of control. If they say he's their king, they can have him. After all, Caiaphas was the one who said it would be good if one man died for the people. Then let them. Let them have him. They want to slaughter a sacrificial lamb. That's on them, not me. I wash my hands of the matter. If his crucifixion, his sacrifice leads to peace, then that's a small price to pay in the big scheme of things. I done. I wash my hands of the matter. What is truth? I'll show them. Truth is power. I've made my decision. Crucify him. Lord Jesus, they dress you as a king to mock you, but your crown announced to the world the truth that you really are the ruler of all things in heaven and on earth. Jesus, we can't comprehend the depth of your love that you would sacrifice your glory to enter into the world as a human and endure this for us. May your kingdom come to eat to earth to each of us and to all who still live in the kingdom of darkness. Amen. Jesus, 你愿意牺牲你天上的荣耀
於是比拉多將耶穌交給他們去釘十字架，他們就把耶穌帶了去。耶穌背着自己的十字架出來，到了一個地方，名叫足牛地，希伯來話叫各各他。他們就在那裏釘他在十字架上，還有兩個人和他一同釘着，一邊一個，耶穌在中間。比拉多又用牌子写了一个名号，安在十字架上，写的是犹太人的王拿撒勒人耶稣。有许多犹太人念这名号，因为耶稣被钉十字架的地方与城相近，并且是用希伯来、罗马、希利利三样文字写的。犹太人的祭司长就对比拉多说。不要写犹太人的王，要写他自己说我是犹太人的王。比拉多说：我所写的，我已经写上了。兵丁既然将耶稣钉在十字架上，就拿他的衣服分为四分，兵一份；又拿他的女衣，这件女衣原来没有缝儿，是上下一片织成的。他们就彼此说：我们不要撕开，只要拈钩，看谁得着。这要应验经上的话说：他们分了我的外衣，为我的女衣拈钩。兵丁果然做了这这事。站在耶稣十字架旁边的，有他母亲与他母亲的姊妹，并那。罗摆的妻子玛利亚和抹大利的玛利亚，耶稣见母亲和他所爱的那门徒站在旁边，就对他母亲说：母亲，看你的儿子。又对那门徒说：看你的母亲。从此，那门徒就接他到自己的家里去了。Lord Jesus, in the midst of the jeers, the ridicule, the punishment, the condemnation, and the cruelty, you never took a backward step and thought about yourself. You never stopped thinking about the needs of others or the purpose for which you came to God forgive us and bring us into a relationship with you. There was no sacrifice too great, no price too high. That you were not willing to pay to accomplish that, Jesus, we can't comprehend the depth of your love, that you would offer yourself as a sacrifice, of love that we might be yours forever. Inspire us by that love that we may daily lay down our lives, caring for and serving others above ourselves. Amen. Jesus. 当人喺度取笑你，嚟到去惩罚你，嚟到去诶辱骂你，嚟到去虐待你嘅时候，你从来冇退后，嚟到去为咗自己，你从来冇为到自己嘅需要嚟到着想，你永远都系为咗他人嚟到去完成你嘅使命。求你原谅我哋，让我哋同神恢复翻一个和好嘅关系。对于你嚟讲。冇一個嘅犧牲係太大，或者所付上嘅代價太高，以致到你唔願意為我哋嚟到犧牲，你仍然嘅完成呢個嘅使命。主耶穌，我哋唔可以明白到點解你咁願意將自己嚟到犧牲，只不過係為咗成就呢個嘅救恩。只要我哋願意，我哋永遠屬於你。求你嚟到去感動我哋，明白你嘅愛，以致到我哋同樣嘅嚟到愛別人。奉祷告，奉主名求，阿门。
on the hill of Calvary, the light of all the world, with the world on his shoulder, the weight of all our shame on him. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there. 
So they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers, therefore, came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus, and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you also may believe. Loving Jesus, from start to finish, your journey on this earth was for us. By the pouring out of your most precious blood, by the pain and suffering you endured for us, by the love with which you loved us to the end, you have finished your work for us. Jesus, we can't comprehend the depth of your love that you will sacrifice it all, given your own life for us. May we believe what you have done and now live the life you have given us. Amen. 亲爱的主耶稣当你愿意为我们的牺牲愿意将你的生命换取我们的永生我们愿意相信你为我们所作的我们都愿意接受你所赐给我们的永生祷告奉主名求
to see my name written in the wounds. For through your suffering, I am free. Death is crushed to death. Life is mine to live. Holy God, we remember Pilate's question, what is truth? Now we have seen the truth. Jesus Christ, your word made flesh, betrayed, denied, mocked and beaten, sacrificed and put to death on a cross, buried in a tomb. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have seen the truth. But now there is more. Show us the truth of your saving power. Show us the way beyond the grave. Show us the life that is everlasting through Jesus Christ our Lord, the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. <laughs>